Well, hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to Royalty Soaps. Today's autumnal soap is called Bonfire Nights. It is the deepest, it is the darkest, most sultry soap of the group and looks very similar to our dragon fire and brimstone cold process soap that we have made in the past. I like to throw a fire soap in there every October or November. And this one I decided to make an artisan soap, so without frosting. I listened to you guys last year. There were a lot of people who were like, I really like this, but also could you do one with no frosting? And I was like, yes, yes I can. And here we are. Also just going to throw out there because I already know that people are going to comment. All of my little background items and the shirts that I'm wearing this month will be linked down in the description box below. There's two of the shirts that were not from small shops, but they were really, really cute. So I got them. Um, and then this one is from an Etsy shop and it's just absolutely adorable. Um, the little pumpkin one is from an Etsy shop. And then I made the garland behind me using baker's twine and some little felt pom-pom balls that I got from a place called Benzie and then another place called the Felt Pod. So I'll leave those two small shops down below as well, trying to do a little more like shout outs for the small businesses. Um, I definitely hope to do sort of a gift guide in December. So if there are some small shops that you think I should shop, then then you can leave them down below. Well, that's enough chitter chatter. Let's get at her. Woo, I'm ready. This one's gonna be good. The majority of this soap is going to be black. However, because I have some really, really pretty accent colors, I have to go ahead and add the lye water solution to the oils, blend it all up first, and then split everything off. Then we'll add in all the black oxide. It's kind of a pain to work with black colorants because they just get over everything, but I promise it's gonna be be worth it for this one. Just gonna pour my lye water solution into my soap base, my five oils. If you'd like to use this recipe, it's down in the description box below. If you'd like to learn to make soap, I have a training series walking you through it. The goal in the series was to make beautiful soaps that were inexpensive. All right, so with my stick blender from Amazon, it's like 25 bucks, y'all. If you need a good stick blender, pretty cheap. I highly recommend. I'm gonna blend this up on high until just past emulsion. That's gonna be about 20 to 30 seconds for this larger batch. Marvelous, excellent, everything looks good. I'm so excited. Okay, so I've got to get three accent colors. It's gonna be about 10 ounces a piece for these accents. They're gonna be pretty tiny. Actually, let's go ahead and go for a full 16. 10 just wasn't looking like enough. I apologize for this medieval mess. There's a misconception out there that I'm a very clean soap maker. I'm actually not. I just clean up my messes as I go along and I don't show them to you guys because it's distracting. It's not because I want y'all to think I'm perfect. I, I just don't want to ruin the experience. <laughs> now these three little accent colors are not going to be scented like I said before. For the colors I have pumpkin head mixed with a little bit of cheesy poof neon that anchors the orange. Sometimes oranges can get a little bit dull. Pumpkin head isn't really one of them, but I just wanted to make sure that it was super, super bright. Next, I got some true yellow. So when I find a color that I think just works, I don't change. True yellow, in my opinion, is the best yellow. All of the other yellows just don't stay as potent or you have to use more of them to get the same effect. The same goes for the colorant I am now adding, which is Trial by Fire. All the other reds bleed, this one doesn't. I don't have to mix it, it's ready to go. Why would I waste my time with anything else? So now that those are in, I'm gonna blend them up with this mini whisk to make sure that the color looks right. I'm not too worried about it, but still. We just wanna make sure that everything is as potent as it needs to be. That orange looks stunning. You can have lots of different fire looks in your soap. I'm going for one that's a little more drippy today. I'm gonna to be doing a drop and I'm not 
going to be swirling it. I don't really want any spikiness. I want this to be a softer looking soap. The fragrance oil I'm using today is a Secret Sauce Custom Blend. If you like the smell Marshmallow Fireside by Bath & Body Works, you may enjoy this soap. Like I said, it's a custom blend. I have mixed fragrances together to get the scent. But if I had to compare it to something pretty well known, that would be uh, what I compare it to. These look stunning. Now let's add in our colorant and our fragrance oil. So I blended black oxide into this container. I also blended in activated charcoal, kaolin clay. And of course we have our fragrance oil as the base. So I'm gonna mix that up with my mini whisk as well, just to make sure that anything that may be settling down at the bottom of this container gets blended in and I can kind of feel that with this mini whisk. By the way, this is the mini whisk I like the most. I have tried so many of them over the years, but this one from Bonzen Kitchen is my favorite. I'm gonna do my best to pour this in really quick so that I can get all of it out of my container. It did a pretty good job. You see there's almost no residue in there, no big clumps or anything. It all came out. I'm still gonna scrapey scrapey my little fragrance oil container. Get it all in there. All right, looking awesome. Now we can blend that up with our stick blender. Hopefully it performs well, but I put things in place just in case it doesn't. Actually, before I blend that up, I'm gonna blend this one up. Now I should probably note, this is not the blackest black I've ever created. It is a really, really, really dark gray, but the fragrance oil blend does discolor a little bit. So I hope that that will help carry it. And I liked the idea of it being a little bit smokier. It does have sort of a smoky smell to it. I don't know, I just, I didn't want it to be fully like just almost that blue black color. I wanted it to be more of a gray black. It is performing very well and my gosh, it smells amazing. Okay, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go get my, I don't know why I'm so excited guys. I didn't have any caffeine or nothing. I'm just really excited and it's late at night. I'm gonna get my slab mold from Workshop Heritage and then we will come back and we'll pour the soap after this quick commercial break. It's all coming to me tonight. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh, oh, a scandal to be seen with such a mess, such an absolute horror. All right, into the mold we go. Ah, oh, yes, it's at the perfect consistency. I let it set up a little bit because it was actually a little bit runny before and I need it to set up just a little bit so that my colors don't blend together so completely. I can also see teeny tiny bits of graininess because of the activated charcoal. I'm gonna pour the rest of this in. Like I said, absolutely perfect consistency. And I am going to scrapey scrapey my really, really big containy because I am going to be putting some of those fiery colors on top after I pour them in as a drop swirl. And therefore we don't really need any extra black. So it's all gonna go in. All right, let's start with the orange. That sounds fun. I'm just going to go back and forth and I'm gonna try to do two passes with the color. So put in about half of of it now and I am pouring from up really high oh gosh drat that was not part of the plan never mind we proceed though with caution I'm gonna try to pour this one where I did not pour the other two and I'm not going to scrape the container I'm just going to pour the rest of it in and whenever it starts getting really drippy I'm gonna stop because again I do want to have some design on top this last bit in okay it's starting to drip so no more and once again the final color starting to drip so no more now I had an idea to texture the top of this soap but after looking at it now it kind of makes me want to do like a swirl on top because these are some really cool colors <laughs> 
Wow, it looks so pretty. <laughs> All right, let's swirl the top and see what we think. Ooh, stunning. I love that. Ooh, golly. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing over here. This is a pretty big swirling stick. I wonder if I should go with like a chopstick or even a toothpick. I also wonder what would happen if I did this first in the design and then pulled that soap so that the edges have a little more swirl to them. Yeah, like now what is it gonna look like? I feel like that looks better. Come here, my little friend. I knew you'd come in handy again. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this one. I kind of like it. I don't know, but this whole soap I'm obsessed with. I'm gonna spritz the top with rubbing alcohol to seal in this design. And that's it. We're done. I'm having to film like this because it keeps picking up hints of blue even though it's not blue. I think it's just because it's reflecting my screen. So if you're seeing bits of blue, <laughs> that's actually not there. It's just my monitor shining down on it. But I am so in love with this. This might be one of the ones that has to come back yearly. All right, so I am going to let this sit for 18 to 24 hours, and then we will come back and we will chop this up and take a peek at the inside after this quick commercial break. Y'all, look at that top. I'm obsessed. It does look so fiery. Also, you can't tell, but the drops inside look super cool. Line this up with Evangeline. I'm just gonna press down and we'll take a peek at that inside. Oh, this is my favorite bar. Look at that swirl. Okay, let's look at the inside. Oh yeah, perfect. This looks exactly how I wanted it to. Little drips of swirly fire. Look at that yellow. That's my favorite one. Ooh, this looks cool too. And let me tell you guys, if you like the Dragonfire and Brimstone soap, you are definitely going to like this one because it smells unreal. It is a very nostalgic smell. And I don't know why because I mixed it up myself, but it must smell similar to something that I had smelled in childhood. There are certain so- <gasps> Whoa! Oh my goodness, that looks awesome. Yeah, there are definitely certain soaps that I know I'm going to enjoy photographing. This is one of them. This is going to look in Incredible. Do you like it? Do you like this version of a fire soap? You have to let me know down in the comments below because again, I'm keeping track of what you guys say, what you like, what I should remake in the future. I wanna make sure that you guys are actually getting soaps you enjoy and not just soaps I enjoy. I want this to be a, a, a double thing. I, I like it and you like it. This is another one of those fragrances that really mellowed out into something gorgeous with time. I know a lot of you guys are gonna like this one. I'm starting starting to hone in on y'all's taste a little more. And this is gonna be one you definitely enjoy, especially, like I said earlier, if you like the Dragonfire and Brimstone fragrance. Anyway, you can get this at royaltysoaps.com on the 7th of November with the rest of the Autumn Vibes. Yeah, of course, that's why I picked this shirt. Autumn Vibes collection. <laughs> And uh, yeah, cool. I'll see you over on Instagram and maybe TikTok. I really want to make more TikToks, but honestly, they're surprisingly time consuming. Anyway, be sure you do something fun for yourself, like building a bonfire and roasting marshmallows. Don't do what I did though, because oh my gosh, when I was like 11 or 12, story time, when I was like 11 or 12, I was next to a fire that my dad and my uncle made and they moved wood onto it that had poison ivy on it and half my body within like six to eight hours, I'm extremely allergic to poison ivy, half my body right down the middle was just covered in poison ivy blisters. My face, my ears, my hands, my armpits, my knee pits, thigh, belly button. It was a nightmare. My mom had to keep cortisone cream on me. It was just, 
the worst. Also, that was right around Christmas time, so Merry Christmas to me! Moral of the story, make sure the wood that you burn in your little fire pit does not have poison ivy on it because you will regret it later. Alternatively, you could make s'mores in the microwave. <laughs> I don't care what you do, just be sure you do something fun for yourself today. Again, I know I always say it, and I said this in the last video. I say this because I mean it, and I want you to do it. Go do something nice for yourself, think about it, consciously do it, and let it heal the wounds of the day. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Wounds of the day could mean you tried to light a candle with a match and it broke. Or you tried to thread felt pom-poms and your needle wasn't sharp enough and your husband had to help you with pliers, pull every single one of the 50 pom-pom balls through with the needle and it took you 30 minutes. That's, that's a wound. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have really just talked and talked. One of these days I'm gonna upload a video in which I just have a conversation with y'all and maybe I'll just answer some questions and that would be good. So if you want me to do that, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time. So until then, have an absolutely royal day. <laughs> Bye for now. Meow. <laughs>